Hello everybody, my name is Quinn Kalen. I'm a flight director here at NOAA Aircraft Operations Center. I'm a flight director on the P3 and the G4. And today I'm going to go over the P3 briefing before we go into a hurricane. Part of being safe is being prepared and we wanna make sure that you're prepared for this hurricane season. So let's get started. All right, so this is the overview slide of the briefing. We can see the mission ID at the top. Our objectives for this day was a butterfly pattern, which I will show on the next slide, and also with extra science from the Hurricane Research Division, you see by number two there. And we'll usually get this information the day before we're supposed to fly. So we'll have the scientific information, we'll have how many expendables we will want to drop. After we get the scientific information, we will look at the NAC forecasts the morning of. So as we are preparing for a flight into a hurricane, we utilize the National Hurricane Center's advisory discussions. This would also be a great tool for you and your friends and family to use to prepare for hurricane season and if there is a landfalling event in your area. We also need to make sure that we have a proper head count of individuals that are on the plane. Moving on to the next slide, this is the specifics of the pattern. This is what is sent to us the day before. This is a typical butterfly pattern. And then you can see on the northeast side or the top right side, the extra science modules that we have. We have the flames module and the spiral, but several factors go into flying a storm when you're going over land. First of all, we need to make sure that we are above any mountains. Also, if there's other aircraft out in the storm, say for example, the Air Force is out there and they're flying at 10,000 feet, we need to coordinate with the pilots. This is during the brief, if we wanna fly at 8,000 feet or 12,000 feet. So in conjunction with the land, if our policy says we have to fly 10,000 feet before lowering our altitude, and the Air Force is out there at 10,000 feet already, we are forced to start at 12,000 feet. So these things are taken into consideration. As well as the drop points, you can see several drop points that denote which locations we want to drop at. We will not drop over land. So some of these southwesterly points are dropped out of the plan, we will not drop those. So that is taken into consideration as well. So adjustments may be made during the brief so that the science and the data that we can collect can go into the models and they can also help the NAC forecaster. Moving on to the next slide, this is the slide where we talk about the Air Force or any other aircraft that are going to be in the storm with us. For example, here N42, which is what we were flying on that day. And we also had TL-71, which is the Air Force Hurricane Hunters. We can get this information also from the National Hurricane Center and it's called the plan of the day or in short, the pod. We'll then move into some more satellite imagery here. We have the GLM on the left side and we have an IR image on the right side. I primarily focus on the left image due to it shows the lightning strikes and the lightning. So convectivity, and we wanna make sure we're not flying into the worst part of the storm. Sometimes it is what it is and you just gotta keep trucking through. Uh, but if we can avoid it, we will try to. And with this storm, it was coming north and we were taking off from Lakeland. And so right when we took off, Lakeland is right about here. If you can see my mouse, it's right about here. And so we were taking off and going straight south into the storm. So we immediately had weather to deal with on the transit. And so I used this radar imagery to show the current state of what we may have to deal with on the way. And I'll also include a lightning graphic as well, just to show if the storm does have excessive lightning, we'll be able to see that. So we didn't have too much lightning to deal with. So while you're preparing for a hurricane, maybe making landfall for your area, a really good tool to use would be the National Weather Service radar and their discussions as well. That's what we'll use, especially if we're coming back to Lakeland. We'll wanna make sure that we have these images up on the plane as well to make sure we're safe coming back or if the airfield is impacted with any weather. Now we talk about our transit to the storm. If the storm is close, such as Ian was, we will look at 10,000 foot winds. That's usually where we transit at. So this was the flight level winds to the storm. On the left side and on the right side was our projected time to leave the storm so we would be able to to see all the winds getting out of the storm. So once we finished that last tail Doppler radar leg and we completed any science objectives that the scientists wished to be completed, we climbed up to 18,000 feet and we'll take a look at the winds. And this is crucial for fuel consumption and planning to make sure we have enough fuel before we take off. After that, we will talk about hazards in the storm. Usually go from top to bottom. So convection, the max tops are 50,000 and plus. The P3 cannot go much higher than 25,000 feet. So what I do is I put 50,000 feet, that way we know that there's gonna be convection in our operating area. Onto the next line, we look at the icing layer. So 
In this case, today, the icing layer started at 15,000 feet and it went all the way up to 35,000 feet. And what this does, it lets the crew know that if we do have to go higher than 15,000 feet, that we will have to prepare for potential icing. Going down to the turbulence, light to moderate explains how severe we would expect the turbulence to be. And then low level wind shear is specifically for airfields. So taking off from Lakeland, we did not have any low level wind shear and arriving to Ellington Field, we did not have any low level wind shear. We monitor volcanic ash just in case there is any eruptions in the area or any ash is coming into our operating area. This is quite hazardous to the aircraft engines. So that's something we keep a close eye on. We've also included space weather. It will interrupt our high frequency or our HF comms. So if there's any space weather, solar flares, or anything like that that interrupt those communications, we want to let the flight crew know about that. Salt accretion is negative. This usually happens in a storm that's more northerly latitude. And then we'll move on to our next slide, which is airfield weather. We'll take a quick look at the airfield weather to determine uh, hazards taking off, crosswinds, or any precipitation or storms in the vicinity. And the next slide will be any alternates that we would like to use between here and our end location. Now that you've seen everything that goes behind the brief of a P3 hurricane mission, please make sure that you and your family are safe this season. Here are some links to follow to find the risks and ways to prepare for your area. Again, my name is Quinn Kalin with the NOAA Aircraft Operations Center. Thanks for watching and stay safe.